Hey everybody, how's it going? Stadman coming back at you once again, and today I am going to be talking about more Blu-rays and one DVD. One. So I made an order with Second Spin, and I actually got some pretty cool stuff. The average price came to about $5 per title. I got six titles. I was originally supposed to get seven but uh, I guess they just didn't have it in stock anymore and it got that one got cancelled from the order. Whatever. I, I don't mind. Not a big deal to me. I, I would have liked to get it, but it's not like it's not a deal breaker for me. So yeah, I'm very happy with what I was able to get here for five bucks a piece essentially. Some of them were a little bit more expensive than others. I'll explain why as we go along perhaps. But yeah, on average they were five bucks a piece, so it's hard to beat that. Five bucks for Blu-ray, great deal. And in the case of the DVD that I got is also a great deal. But uh, I'll save that one for last because I feel like it's pretty special. So to start off with here, let's talk about some Earth to Echo, which some of you may have seen, some of you may not have seen, some of you may know what it is, some of you may not. This movie is essentially, I feel like you should call it like a combination of E.T. and Short Circuit, maybe even. Because it really is kind of like that. A bunch of kids get together and almost Stranger Things style. A bunch of kids get together and they find this uh, little alien robot thing, right? And they're like, what the hell is this? And they find out that it's like transmit if I remember correctly they find out that it's like transmitting a signal or something like that and they find out where they need to go in order to help this thing and just like with E.T. and the kids trying to help the alien get back home very much the same kind of thing here with Earth to Echo they're trying to help the little alien robot thing get back home and I like this movie I liked it quite a bit. I didn't feel like it was perfect, but it was pretty good. And um, that was one of the reasons, actually, that I was very excited to see the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie because it was made by the same director. The same guy that directed this movie directed Out of the Shadows. And I felt like he did a really good job with that one as well. I was expecting good things, and I feel like I got them. So you can take that as you want. May. I know a lot of people are going to just disagree with me on that, but uh, I don't know. I like Dave Green. I feel like he does really good stuff, and this movie is proof of that, and Out of the Shadows is proof of that. I feel like he knows how to make some pretty damn good movie, like family films, family-friendly films, if you will, and this is an excellent example of that, so yes. Very cool. Glad that I got it for such a good deal. I believe this was found at a few Dollar Trees at some point, and that may have driven the value of it down a bit. But uh, yeah, still five dollars to get this, and it was brand new. Actually, you, I buy these things used, and sometimes they come to me brand new, factory sealed, and that's exactly what happened in this case. So yeah, very happy with that. Brand new copy of Earth to Echo for five bucks or around there. Next up, I decided to get The Pursuit of Happiness, which is something I've been thinking about a lot more recently because I feel like the political message of it is not something that I necessarily agree with, but at the same time, it's a very heartwarming film, and I don't know, the message of a guy who's doing everything he can to make things work and to become successful. Who doesn't like that? I love that story. That's a great story, and I feel like Will Smith does a great job of portraying that kind of character in this movie, and I wanted to see it again. It had been a long time since I'd seen this, and I wanted to see it again, and I decided, you know what, I also want to have it in my collection because I know I'm going to want to see it again afterwards, so... There you go. Five buckaroonies. This is another one that isn't hasn't typically been very valuable. It's not very hard to find it for a good price. But uh, nonetheless, I still got a pretty good deal on it. And 
very happy to finally have this in my collection and so I can finally revisit it, you know what I mean? Next we have Planes, Disney's Planes, which I have not actually seen yet. And yes, if you're wondering, when I got this, the discs were in horrible condition. Fingerprints everywhere. Thankfully, that's all it was. All I had to do was rub the discs with my t-shirt for about, I'd say, 30 seconds a disc, and they were like new. So, that uh, that tends to happen a lot with these kids' movies. Parents just get these movies for their kids, and they let them do whatever the heck they want to with the disc, and the disc gets manhandled, and just like, oh my goodness, it's just the worst condition we could imagine, you know what I mean? Except, usually, most of the damage is, again, just fingerprints. And those actually do come off. If you put a little bit of effort into cleaning them off, you will get them off. Especially on Blu-rays, you will get them off. DVDs, it's a little bit harder because they don't have the anti-scratch coating. But Blu-rays do have that coating, and so they come off very, very easily. A lot more easily than they used to. So, yeah. Anyways, I have not seen this movie, and I've been wanting to see it for quite some time. I am I mean, it's got to be based on those the cartoons that they did back in the day. Uh, Walt Disney had a bunch of old cartoons. I, I don't know if they came out in, like, the 50s, the 60s, the 70s. It was around that time when they actually came out. But uh, when I was a kid and we first got Disney Channel, the first few years of Disney Channel, you guys, instead of, like, having commercial breaks, the breaks would sometimes had advertisements for other shows that were going to be on their channel, but they would also have just random cartoons from Disney's library. So every now and then you'd get to see, like, random cartoons from throughout Disney's library, and uh, they also would have blocks dedicated to showing just the cartoons so i remember like whether it was early in the morning or even late at night and there's nothing else on late being subjective when i was a kid it was like you know 10 11 o'clock or something like that they would have you know random old cartoons on and some of those cartoons would be the ones where they had the cars there were talking cars or like anthropomorphic cars that's what i'm trying to get at the anthropomorphic cars which of course is what inspired the cars movie and they did a very similar thing i believe with planes in one of those early cartoons as well and here we go they basically did the same thing with this movie i know this got a sequel haven't seen it because i haven't even seen this one yet so when i saw this for for what came to five dollars on second spin i'm just like yeah, that's a great deal. Hell yeah. Anytime you can get a Disney title for under $10, that's a freaking steal. I don't know if this one's a very good one or not, but uh, I'm expecting it'll be at least worth $5. So, yeah. And again, didn't have to put too much effort into cleaning the discs, so I'm cool with it. It looks good to me. I'm hoping that it is good, but uh, we'll see. Next up, I found Take This Waltz here on Second Spin. Uh, I watched this originally with my good friend Skin Slip. We, I believe we did it for Project 365, which was to watch 365 movies in 365 days, which was years ago now. God, I can't believe it's been this so long, but yeah. And we did accomplish it, you guys, and I believe this was one of the movies we watched. Skin Slip absolutely loved it. I felt like it was good, but I didn't think it was, like, the best thing I'd ever seen. I thought it was above grade, you know what I mean? It was top-notch for a romantic comedy, but I'm not really a romantic comedy guy, so I was like, eh, I don't know. I still like romantic comedies, I'm just not as into it as some other people are, obviously. So... <laughs> When we finished watching it, I was, I was pretty much convinced, like, even though it was a good price at the time, I don't know if I want to buy it right now, I'm probably not going to watch it for a few years, you know. Sure enough, I haven't really had an interest in watching the, 
I haven't really had an interest in watching this for a long time. But recently I've gone back and been like, you know what? This is a really good movie. I do kind of want to watch it again. So decided to finally pick it up, stop waiting on it, and put this in my collection. Take this waltz. A great romantic comedy that I feel like anybody can relate to and anybody can enjoy. And yes, it does have Seth Rogen, but it's not about Seth Rogen. He's not even the most important character in the film. It's it's all about the female character and just the way that they portray how she deals with things and the way they... It's just so real. It's exactly how real people deal with things. It's how exactly how real people react to things. So, yeah. I love how real this movie is. If you like real romantic comedies, real romantic films, this is one you definitely got to check out. Next up here, I got... The Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 1. Funny story behind it. I got it primarily because of the fact that I could not find it for streaming anywhere. <laughs> like, I've been meaning to watch this one for a long time, but I didn't want to have, have to necessarily buy it before watching it. I was hoping I'd be able to find it on a streaming service. I have freaking Hulu. I have Amazon. I have Netflix. I have... I even have HBO uh, through my cable service. I have my cable service. I have so many different avenues for w for watching this when it comes to streaming, but it's not available for streaming anywhere, at least not for free with any of the streaming services that I have. So, yeah, it's just been like, what the hell? And the worst part about it is, on at least a few of those services, the second part is available for streaming. So I can watch the second part, but I can't watch the first part. Isn't that the great thing about streaming, you guys? Don't you love how you can watch the second part, but not the first part when it comes to digital streaming? That's how great digital streaming is, guys, right? Right? This is why physical media is so freaking important. So, yeah, I've been wanting to watch this for quite some time. Uh but didn't want to pay a premium price for it, so saw it for five bucks finally here, and there you go. Finally got it, and I'm sure I'll enjoy it. Now I can watch this and finally go watch the streaming version of the second part, and if I like that one, then I'll go ahead and uh, buy that one as well. So, yeah, there you go. Pretty cool stuff to be able to get the third part. I believe this is the third part in the series for... A really low price. I know I got the first two parts for really low prices, so happy about that. Last but not least, I picked up one DVD with this. As I mentioned at the beginning, I picked up one DVD, and that one DVD is a pretty special one because I believe it's one that probably isn't going to get any other release for a long time, sadly, and that is Smoke Signals. On DVD. This is a Chris Iyer movie. It is a fantastic, hilarious movie about a couple of uh, Native American guys, these two guys right here, who are going like on a road trip, and I believe they're going because they need. This guy needs to go pick up his father's things because his father died or something like that. It's been so long since I've seen it. But, uh, yeah, it's like an emotional thing, but it's also very funny, and there's just so many memorable scenes in this movie, and it's just fantastic. In terms of uh, Native American cinema, I would probably rate this pretty damn high on the list of, like, the best there is. So if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend it, just even if you don't think you're going to be into that kind of stuff. Give this one a shot. It's definitely worth it. It's so, so good. And sadly, again, it's not available on Blu-ray. I think it might be on VHS, but uh, otherwise you got to go with this DVD. And because it's Miramax, and also apparently Buena Vista helped to release this as well. Distributed by Buena Vista Home Entertainment. I don't think there is enough interest in this that... Buena Vista 
Disney wants to go through rights hell with Miramax in order to get another release of this at some point. Like, I don't think they want to go through that. I don't think we're going to see this in any other format anytime soon, sadly. I would love, though, if this got, like, a Criterion or something. I think it deserves a Criterion. That's how good this is. It definitely deserves a lot more respect than it's been given. And uh, yeah, I'm just happy to have it in pretty much the best way that you can get it right now. So, yeah. Sadly, because it's out of print, I think it's out of print at least, and because it's out of print, it's really not easy to come by. Now, it's not very hard to find for a decent price, but usually decent price on this one is between like 8 and 10 bucks. So, the fact that I was able to get this for when the, you know, price averaged out, I got it for 5 bucks. I'm pretty happy with that. That's a really good price for something that you can rarely find for less than 8 to 10. So, yeah. Out of print, 5 bucks. Need I say more? I think I would do that for pretty much any out of print title every day of the week because almost guaranteed when it comes to out of print titles they're going to be worth at least five dollars at least so if you ever see a title that's out of print and it's five dollars and you're like well i don't know just stop if it's something you think you might have any kind of interest in at all and it's out of print and it's only five dollars get it that's a no-brainer so yeah because <laughs> you're never going to see it again probably at least not at that price <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that will do it for me today that was everything that I managed to pick up from uh, from Second Spin that's right I've had some pretty good luck with Second Spin as you can see a lot better luck than I had with FYE so yeah I know that Second Spin probably uses the same exact warehouse or whatever to ship out their Blu-rays and DVDs and physical media and whatnot to the masses that FYE does. But for whatever reason, whenever it comes from second spin for me, I get a lot better experience. I get stuff that's in a lot better condition than I did with uh, FYE. So, yeah. That being said, that will do it for me today. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you later. Peace.